I recently finished Into the Pit, and it was surprisingly fun and addicting. It's not my type of game, but since there was an Xbox Game Pass, I said why not give it a shot, and I thought I would give some gameplay and achievement review. Into the Pit is a fast-paced, retro-style FPS roguelite. Now that sounds like a lot of word salad. I would say it's like a slower, run-based Doom. You dual wield two different spell attacks that can be modified with different afflictions and stat buffs. There are four rooms per floor and there's five floors, the last floor being a boss. When you start off playing, I would recommend taking it pretty slow and always watch the corners because they love to place enemies there. Personally, I found these combos of spells to be the best. The Hawk and the Swarm, the Needle and the Nebula. Later on, once I got the hang of the game, I grabbed two nebulas and those were pretty OP, like long range uh, and short range shotguns that can destroy the enemies quickly. Hawk and Nebula can one to three shot most enemies and they have long ranges. Needle and Swarm are high fire rate and close range. Every time you clear a room, you get a choice of upgrade for your spells. Over the course of the game, I found Poison, Curse, Bleed, Weakness to be the best ones. And you get increased fire rate health when picking up modes, killing enemies, more damage, making our afflictions more effective. Every second and fourth floor, there will be a room with villagers you need to save. Make sure you ring the bell for them to count. And the last villager will always be after the boss battle on the fifth floor. There are three villagers per dungeon. You'll need to save villagers for rooms and more dungeons, upgrades, and for an achievement. The rooms that I recommend are Second Wind, Health, Antidote, Healing Key, Healing Moat, and Suture. These rooms are the ones you place in when, while you're doing the ritual to start a level. It gives us healing when we destroy a key at the end of the level or picking up a moat. De and decreases our bleeding and poison time, which is clutch in some levels. Once you unlock these runes, you can play more faster and aggressively. For achievements, there are only 10 and they're pretty straightforward. Half are story based, I would say. And a few are upgrade related. And the only one that can be annoying is Advent Reader for collecting 36 journals. They appear on floors 2 and 4 after you retry a dungeon after saving villagers. But before beating a boss, that's what I found. Because when I was doing levels after I beat the boss, I didn't get them to show up. So make sure you can try to do that. Because after you beat a boss, there will always be one journal page. So you can do one run and beat a boss to always get the journal page, but that's kind of uh, slower. You can only get 34 pages this way, but... Once you beat the final boss, you get two pages there. Those are the last two pages you can get. I wish there was more achievements, but it does have us beat the whole game, so it's a good list. This should take you about 10 to 12 hours. It took me like 12 or 13. So I hope you enjoyed this little video, and I hope you try it out. It's an Xbox Game Pass. It's available elsewhere. I know it's on Steam. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.